Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Spiritual Leader Podcast. Uh, so grateful that you are joining in with us, listening, watching, whatever you're doing. Uh, we really do enjoy uh, doing these podcasts. Yeah. It's really just a good flow. Um, uh, I was going to say Laura does a great job, but she really has a great host to follow. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, I could sit team. here all day and just go back and forth and talk. It's, it's kind of, and River too. River's yeah. here. She's uh, she's excited about the podcast. We'll have her on for the dog podcast. She and, hears somebody. Yeah, that's all good. Um, Laura, we got into um, last week talking about uh, obedience. Yes. And, uh, the importance I of just, obedience. That word, mm. it is so weighty to me. It, it, I could just feel the weight weight yeah of that word and how important now we we have been we we pastor now Mm -hmm. and we we youth pastored before that for many many years probably a total of what almost 24 years together right doing that yeah is that right 23 yeah together and and then but you you've done ministry your whole life Mm -hmm. and i was doing ministry before we were married Mm -hmm. you know so it's we got a few years on the books A a few years and um, it's kind of crazy that we get to see people's lives when they're good. We get to pe- see people's lives, the, the results of faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Um, I, could, I can name off some folks that have been in the church here for many years. They're faithful. Mm-hmm. The hand of the Lord's upon them. There's not fireworks going off around mm-hmm. them, uh, but they're faithful. They're consistent. They're, yeah. They seem to be following the Lord mm-hmm. through good times and bad. Yeah. And then you get to see people that they get off track Mm -hmm. and as a pastor it breaks your heart it It breaks your heart to see people's lives uh whatever come under just great challenges where marriages are ripped apart families are ripped apart sickness and disease and all those things and somebody said well what does that have to do with obedience well i think it has everything to do with obedience Um, or disobedience, because I think sometimes our disobedience opens up the door. It does. But yeah. we got to, we got to, I know that I just kind of skimmed over that, and that's a whole big can of worms there on obedience. The, the devil does attack us, mm-hmm. but when you're in your place, uh, I believe you're you're more guarded by when, the hand of the ab- Lord. Yeah, when you're abiding in when the you're abiding shadow in him, of the Almighty. I believe you can avoid mm. on any number of pitfalls and attacks it, when you're in your place, you're going to have the, the resources to overcome. Uh, you're going to have the spiritual supply to overcome because it's yeah. not just you overcoming on yeah. your own. You need the supply of others around you as well. It's true. So being in your place and being in obedience is absolutely, my God, read the Bible. I There's, mean, sheesh. I keep thinking too, because you said the word obedience is yeah. weighty. And I keep thinking like there's great humility that goes along with obedience because there are times where you, you are just, you're going to have to humble yourself. And even when we started talking about like being offended, yeah. um, opportunities will arise and they will arise often. Uh, they're to, by design. Yeah, oh, they're, yeah, by, they're uh, strategically. Yes. Strategically it's, designed, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a strategic design of the enemy because he knows that it works. And so we'll have these opportunities to give in to offense. And really it takes Jeez. great humility not to travel down that road, but to remain in this open state where you're just, you're, you're going to lean into obedience. You're going to obey scripture. You're going to obey the Lord. Even in that obedience to forgive someone. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. You didn't sound too excited about that. That's not always exciting. Uh, Nobody wants to forgive. No, (laughs) there's not much exciting about it. No, because let me tell you. But it's, but it's an act of obedience. So we, we spoke in the last podcast that really, um, and there needs to be a greater emphasis on being in the place that God has called you to be. It's not about you being where you want to be. It's not about the being where you were, you know, raised in. But it, it, it's that place. And it could be, it could be a different place, different seasons. The Lord, you know, he moves. And, and he may have, this is where you're to be in this season. But it's so important. It starts with that. Being in the place that God has for you at that 
time. That's, that's obedience. It is obedience. Yeah. So then what is the enemy going to do? He's going to attack you in that place to try and move you out of that place. Because when you're in the place, it's like the Lord is speaking. That's where you'll hear that next step. That's where you'll know I'm, I'm to go here. I'm to do this. Yeah. That's where provisions at. That's you. where there's a supply. That's yeah. where you're being equipped. Yeah. That's where you're being trained. Mm -hmm. Everything you need is in that place. So what does the enemy do? He'll come in oh. and he'll try and pull you from that place. And one of the great um, devices that he'll use, he'll use the device of offense. Yeah, offense. Um, and we have to be aware of that. Offense, personal attacks, financial attacks, attacks against your family. Yeah. But offense is right up there at the it top is. of the list. And so what happens? He'll come in, he'll, he'll get you offended, he'll get you hurt. Distracted. Distracted. Yep. And so then you have the choice before you. Am I going to forgive? Am I going to move forward? Am I going to refuse to lean into that and remain in the place that God <laughs> has p placed me? Or am I going to uproot myself? Am oh, I going to choose to, to put myself in another place that may be a good place, but it's not the place God has for you. You can be in a good place. You can be surrounded by good people and you could be hearing a good word, but still not in the yeah. place that God has called you to be in. Yeah. And isn't it interesting? <laughs> We've heard this, these variations of this saying, but one is birds of a feather flock together and then misery loves company. Meaning if you get offended you you will be surprised how many people that you will find that will gladly join in with you on your offense. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, that's sometimes how offense works. Mm -hmm. Somebody will get offended, and then they'll start telling you about their offense. And before you realize it, they have roped you in with their offense. Now yeah. you have taken on their offense. Yeah. But when someone gets their feelings hurt yeah. or gets offended, which you see a lot, we all yeah. we all have feelings. I yeah. get my feelings hurt yeah. from time yeah. to time. But when that happens, you'll be, it, it's amazing to me how the devil. Even in a marriage. Let me just hit on that too. Why you got to make because, it personal? <laughs> <laughs> because you, I mean, think about it. How many marriages have ended and really it starts with offense. They've gotten offended. Mm -hmm. They've gotten hurt. They can't get over a situation. They can't get over themselves really, but whatever yeah. wow. may have, they're not able to move forward. Mm. The enemy used offense, got in there, divided the marriage, and then the marriage is crumbled. And then it's like, it's not only affecting them, but it affects the children. Yeah. It affects the generations yeah. to follow, but it all started with offense. Laura, Divide. One, we, we kind of touched on this last week. One act of obedience or disobedience affects generations can yeah. affect generations somebody said I, I don't know if my decisions are going to affect my children they my will. god you better wake up and smell the coffee yeah. and smell the roses and smell anything else you need to to wake up the lord has dealt strongly oh. with with me regarding that because there have been times that i've wanted to 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 venture out in a particular area or, you know, say something or do something or respond. And the Lord has really mm. shown me that if you choose to take that path, if you choose to take that road, it's not, it's not necessarily about you, but it's about what is it going to do to your children? Well, and, How and will it affect yeah, them? Yeah. And Laura, what you're saying back to the obedience thing is you look at your children before you Oh, children and future generations are actually good motivators for obedience. Yeah. Because you know how many times I've wanted to quit? Yeah. So then you got to humble yourself. There's then you got to humble yourself. Well, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to make it because if I don't make it, then my kids are going to have to deal oh, with this. It's true. If I don't deal with this mm. battle and fight yeah. and win this battle, my kids are going to be dealing with it. It's a generational problem, right? Mm -hmm. But gosh, I, I keep thinking... Somebody said, uh, will my, deci my decisions, obedience or disobedience affect my children? Yes. A hundred percent, yes. A yeah. thousand percent, yes. Why? Look at the very beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve made one stinking decision <laughs> and it affected hundreds of generations. It affected mankind. It affected their kids. Yeah. Their kids were cursed. I mean, yeah. look in the first family. 
One mm. decision, <laughs> one act of disobedience <laughs> yeah. uh, it resulted in the brothers, the brother killing mm. the other brother because death and sin came in. Mm. Now they're in darkness, right? It Adam and Eve's disobedience affected their children and children and children on down the line. It's still affecting children today, right? Yeah. The generations. Our decisions affect our children. Yeah. I was dealing with a, a individual years ago and I, I basically told him I, we were there were there was an offense there. I begged him. Yeah. I said, please do not allow this offense to take root. Yeah. It, and, I, and I basically on the phone with tears in my eyes, I said, do not do this. It yeah. will affect your children. Yeah. And you know what the person yeah. said to me on the phone, Laura? You know what they said to me? They said, I know it's gonna affect my children. And he, they still did it. Yeah. They had a knowing that it was it's gonna pride. affect their, it yeah. was pride. Yeah. It was pride and it was the power of that offense. Mm. Uh, what's that book uh, you read years ago? Uh, you told the me about it. The Bait of Satan yeah. by John Bevere. Yeah. And it's like, I, I love fishing. I don't get to go much uh, cause I'm a, I'm a, I don't know what I am, but I don't get to, <laughs> I don't have a boat anymore. So um, anyway, you throw the bait out there, right? If I'll be in the Gulf in Steed Hatchie, I'll take that jig head, put a little gulp on there. I'm throwing that bait out there. What am I trying to do with that bait? I'm trying to catch something. Mm -hmm. That's what Satan does. He throws mm -hmm. that, that offense looks like to you what a bait looks like to a fish. Yeah. It's tempting. Appetizing. It's alluring. That's why they call it a lure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it has an allure to it. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's, a, there's chemicals on it that put off a scent for the yeah. fish. That's what the devil does, right? He throws, but I'm gonna tell you what, this is a twofold kind of a thing here, but a fence is a generational destroying bait. Yeah. Don't take the bait. You better yeah. run. I'm telling you right now, if the Lord's dealing with your heart, you better hang, whatever, hang up Make this right. deal. Deal yeah. with that situation now, today. Yeah. Whether you think you're right or they're wrong, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And guess what? You can't control that other person. No. You can't make them forgive you or for, have that. It, that doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You clear your heart. Yeah. And you get it right. Hey, just say, hey, listen, I'm, re I'm releasing this situation. I don't care who's right or wrong, but I'm not allowing this offense to enter in. Yeah. Laura, offenses, Acts of disobedience, getting out of love have, has removed more people from the plan of God than probably any other thing. Yeah. Removes them right out of the, how many, true. how many people called the local ministries yeah. leave because yeah. of disobedience and offense? Yeah. And it costs them. Yeah. How many times have we seen, I had a, I had a guy, this mm. was probably 20 years ago. He, we were youth pastoring and his, he had just gotten his family involved here at the church. And man, he's, he's, they were faithful. They were there. And all of a sudden something came up in that family and he, I don't even remember what it was. He pulled his whole family out of the church. Right. And I watched Laura, even to this day, some 20 years later, mm -hmm. I see both of those kids, their lives are in total disarray. Yeah. The one is just off in all kinds of terrible things. Yeah. The one can't, he can't get his life together. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you, and I'm gonna just tell you how I felt that way, you big dumb parent, that you got your little feathers ruffled and you pulled your family out of the church that mm -hmm. God called them. And now, guess what, Laura? That man and that woman have to answer to God for those it's actions. True. You got in something clouded mm. in your, and listen, the devil got in there and I'm not, I'm not just saying it's all on the person because the devil comes in and tempts yeah, us, Lord. Yeah. But, yeah, well, it, it's, but we, but it's, we have a choice. We got to do better. We have a choice we in the do, matter. <laughs> we got to do better. Yeah. And where God is speaking in that place that he's called you. If you're struggling, then are you in the place that God has called you to be? I read a book uh, uh, years ago. Um, it's called something to do with your assignment, your assignment, the assignment. I forgot. And um, it just talks about there's gonna be attacks 
in the place of your assignment. Yeah. It's not good. But like you said yeah. it, there's there's that provision. Yeah, there's gonna be a supply and a provision That's there. It. And God's gonna be That's it. I was under attack you. last year. <laughs> yeah. But because I was in the place You well, were right where you let me needed tell to you, be. I heard and I hear God all the time, but I heard God God was speaking to me more last year than I feel like any other season. And why was that? Mm. I was in the place that God had called me. I didn't abandon that place. Even when it got hard, even when I didn't want to show up, I showed up anyways. And because I continued to show up, I saw God's faithfulness. It saw me mm. through. So I'm so thankful that what I was What do you think would have happened if you got out from your place? Because you know that's what the purpose of the attack yeah. was. No, I, The I, purpose of those attacks to, was yeah. to get you out of your place. Well, I know it would affect my children. Oh, I, my gosh. I know that it wasn't just about me, yeah. but it was about the generations to follow. And I told you before, yep. those Monday schools that I would sit in, I mean, it was just like life sustaining, just sitting under the word. I wouldn't have made it without that. And so I'm I'm thankful I didn't abandon my place. I'm thankful I didn't just, you know, because sometimes people will just retreat. They'll go to a dark corner. They'll put their covers over their head and they just, well, I'm, I'm going to battle this out by myself. No, that's, that's, that's not even scriptural. Mm. You, you got to be in the place that God has called you to be because the provision, the supply, the answers, the word, the anointing, the power of God, everything you need, it's there. Yeah. It's in that place. I, I keep sensing uh, there's somebody that um, may be listening that you're already, the devil's already trying to talk you out of releasing that offense. He's already, because mm -hmm. you're already gone back into it's your own pride it. and you're saying, well, they did this, that, no. and the other, or whatever. This happened. But you know what? It, it doesn't really matter no, at the yeah. end of the day. There's, what did that, uh, what did someone say the other day? You said, you better know, figure out what that's going to cost you. Strife. Yeah. You're getting a strife or a fence, yeah. really. What is that going to yeah. cost What's you? What's it going to cost you? Because you can't afford that. You yeah. can't afford to be taken out from under God's hand of protection yeah. um, as, you're, as you're choosing to mm. kind of nurse something. I'm going to give you another piece of advice. Get away from those people that are helping to nurse yeah. and empower that offense. Yeah. Cuz everybody, yeah. listen, they 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 don't have to live with their your results. They got to deal with their own stuff, but they're telling you to do something and they don't have to live with your results. Yeah. You have to live with your results. Yeah. So I wouldn't take any advice from anybody number 1 that's not completely living and walking in the place that God's called them to live. Yeah. Don't ever take offense. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't take advice about offense from someone that's offended and <laughs> not in their place. <laughs> that's good. No, no, no I mean, really, Laura, write somebody, that down. somebody, somebody said, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Don't worry. When you quote it, you'll quote it. You won't give me no credit for there it. There you go. No, maybe, maybe one time. Perhaps. But somebody said one time, don't take advice uh, marriage advice from someone that's been divorced seven times. That's just not a good idea, right? Don't take financial advice from someone that's broke. Uh, you know, all those different things. But don't take spiritual advice or godly advice from people that are not walking with the Lord. Yeah. It's just not, it's not going to be good for you. Don't, what does the Psalm, Psalms 1 say? Blessed mm. are the people who don't take advice from ungodly people. Yeah. You know, those... If you take advice from ungodly people, you're going to have the same results as ungodly people, mm -hmm. and they're going to be ungodly results, right? But, Laura, this is so, so powerful. I just, these subjects of, you started this with just obedience. Obedience and disobedience. Being, Simple. And it really does come down to Simple. sometimes a place. Yeah. Being in the place that God's called you to be. And I know some dodo out there oh well, you're just trying to get people to come to your church no i want you to be in the want, right place yeah and I've if, it, sent, if it's I've not sent here then you don't to, need to, to be place. here yes yeah. Yeah. and hey, we don't play that game so yeah. stop thinking like a doofus and pay attention to what god's telling you don't get offended by that yeah don't get offended <laughs> <laughs> don't get offended at the teaching about offense <sighs> but uh there's a place of obedience and really that is the secret place of the most yeah. high that's the place where you're protected and your your provisions amen. there, amen. Your family's protected. Glory to if God. If you do anything, listen. My parents may not have done everything right. Maybe they don't do everything right still, but you know, my mom they raised me and kept me in the place where God could speak to me. Yeah. And you know what? That made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So if you do anything right, parents, mm. grandparents, get your children and grandchildren a place 
where they're they're called to be planted, yeah. right? And don't let anything move you from that place. Amen. That's good. That's great. That's good. Hey, listen, Lauren, I love you. Man, we're just we're rolling out. We're, we're blowing past 200, headed to 500 on these podcasts. And uh, we're going to be here talking to you for a long while. So we love you, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you real soon. God bless.